I would say you probably are braver than you know. Mm-hmm. You're braver than you know. If, if you sat down, our friend listening and watching who feels that, if you sat down across the table from any of us and told us your story, we could point where you're brave. Yeah. We could go, actually, you know, everybody doesn't do that. <laughs> everybody doesn't yeah. do that. Yeah. You actually did a really brave thing, so you're braver than you know. Mm-hmm. And if you will let somebody in, they'll remind you. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Hi, friends. Come on in here. I'm so glad you're here. You will be too, because our friend Annie F. Downs is here with yeah. us. Yay. Oh, it's so good to have you back. Oh, I love being here. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> we are going to talk about so many things. We're okay. going to talk about so being many. brave and all the reasons mm-hmm. that we need to, and but more importantly, all the ways that God helps us to do it yes. when we're not feeling so brave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, can I tell you guys something Please. so dumb first before we get started? Oh, yeah. We love dumb things. I'm very here for this. So So we just got back from Africa. Okay. uh, Day before yesterday. And um, I have this weepy eye. Mm -hmm. Like I got something in it or I got some sort of, I don't know, dirt or something. And so I've been waking up with my eye matted shut and swollen and... Then I'm also a little jet lagged, so if I fall asleep, just nudge me. But the point of the story is today <laughs> is mine and Tim's anniversary. Oh, oh, how many years? So it's like happy anniversary, baby. <laughs> yeah. then, it's I'm, a wink. It's, I'm it's flirting. You're flirting. I'm asleep at six o'clock in the evening, yeah. so it will not be the party he's hoping for. Thirty-seven years. Thirty-seven. That's a long wow. Thirty-seven wow. years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's You're awesome. an excellent winker already so, in your life. So this just adds a little. Something. It's gonna be one. Hot anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Let's celebrate next week. Yeah, Maybe yeah. that's better for you. It's going to have to be brave tonight. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, well, Annie, of course, is a podcast host. She's author. Um, so many things. The That Sounds Fun podcast, mm-hmm. so many people know and love. And your book, 100 Days to Brave, has ushered so many people into the understanding of how God helps us to be brave, Mm -hmm. that it's not just all about there's something missing in Mm -hmm. me and I can't do this. So that's that's what we really want to focus on today a little bit. Mm -hmm. So let me begin by asking all of you this. What is an area that you really needed God's help in to stir up your your bravery at some time in your life? Yeah. (laughs) You want to go? Yeah, mine's not serious though. Okay. <laughs> One time I went to Disney World with Ginger and she made me ride Tower of Terror. And that was terrifying. <laughs> I, I like that's a fun like children were on yes, this ride. So yes. I thought like Erin, you're a big girl, you can do this. And I was terrified, but after we got off, I thought, I'm so brave. Yes. <laughs> we were so it. proud of you. So yeah, proud I think of you. We really need those. Yeah. We actually really need the easier wins, quote, quote. Thank you. We need to say, I ran half a mile so that yes. when you run a 5K, you're like, I think I could actually do a 5K because I've been doing a half a mile. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, so, so we can laugh at your Tower of Terror, but I also want to say to you that actually this is putting a deposit in a bank account that you needed to do. Thank yeah. you. Really? I think so. I yeah. think those really matter. Because it, it honestly felt like I had defeated Yes, like, like a had, win. Yes, yeah, like a win that day. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It was Go a ahead win. and share yours. That might and be her difficult. hair looked fantastic afterwards because it had lots of volume. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you go, you go <laughs> down like fast. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> well, mine was, we just talked about, like, when, before we were getting ready, is just I needed bravery to get back into the dating world. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, like, I needed to be brave enough to, because I hadn't dated in, like, 25 years, yeah. I don't know, like since college. So yeah. it was a long time ago. So That's I need a big, scary step. It's yeah. huge. And then the, the thing that I think was the most terrifying was understanding how dating works now. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's not it's a new game. It's you're not really gonna meet people in a grocery store anymore mm-hmm. because most people are Instacarting. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like it's yeah. not the same the same thing. Don't you wish you could Instacart the right man? Exactly. You oh. can, but you kind of yeah. can now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that, so the, uh, I needed to be brave to like step out and do online dating. That yeah. was something that was really daunting to me because I was just like, I don't want to tell if you know, like the first question that people ask when you're dating that I'm learning and I was like, how'd you guys meet? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like, uh-huh. on an app, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. it, I didn't want to be embarrassed about that possibility, mm-hmm. you know, so it, yes. it was a lot of fear and it was just fear of like the possibility of investing myself into someone and then the, the yeah, potential sure. of, of what happened to me happening again. Will yeah. somebody be unfaithful to me? Will, yeah. will I invest and then be disappointed again? You know, so yeah, yeah I needed to be brave with that. Big step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Thank you. I think an interesting thing, I'm glad we get to say these back to back because I think one of the interesting things about courage is sometimes courage is leaving and sometimes it's staying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's saying yes and sometimes it's saying no. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the situations I'm in currently, there's a lot of like courage to stay where you are instead of leaving for an easier thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it is your church or your job Mm-hmm. or a relationship or even the city you live in, yeah. right? There are so many times where I think I, I live about three hours from my family and there are things come up that I go like, I should just move back home mm-hmm. and do this other job. Yeah. And then I just, when I sit and pray or think about it, I go, no, you know what? It actually takes courage to stay. To stay. It does. Yeah. To mm-hmm. stay yeah. and to keep going on this path instead of a path I think I yeah. know. We don't actually ever really know, right? Yeah. Like yeah. we think it's easier back there, but if you actually go back there, it usually isn't what you thought anyway. Right. And that's yeah. the most scary thing, isn't right. it? The unknown anyway. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's the underlying thing You know, that's the funny thing. People, when we read the Bible, people talk so much about like, man, Noah was so brave or Mary was so brave and and um, but they knew how their story was going to end and it's like no they no, didn't they, did not. they didn't know any more than we know today yeah. on our story and yeah. so then when we read the Bible with the remembrance that no one in the Bible knew how their story was yeah. going to end either except Jesus yeah those are I mean those are some brave people yeah. Yeah. that we get to follow the example of yeah you know what I, I think about it the courage to stay because I was so ready to get out of Dodge after I had well, after I got divorced. Yeah. I was ready to get out of the city mm-hmm. that I've yes. been in, that I was born and raised in, even though I've lived other places. But this is where I've spent the majority of my time. And so many people knew me and our family together. I was ready to yes. get out. And so when I got this huge opportunity to work at a very popular place, um, I even had announced, I think I'm, we may have even announced on the show that I was leaving. I don't know. But I was supposed to leave. I don't think we did. You don't think so? I don't know, I don't because so. Ginger and I... We were pretty. We were, yeah. we were, pregnant pregnant that we were pretty yeah. sure that we could will you here. Yeah. That's right. You did it. <laughs> Look what we you did. did it. You so, did. The Lord prayers are really powerful. So yeah. are you praying for husbands for us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got you got you. Will some people you. in? <laughs> you got you yeah. did work. Be my but Instacart. I was going to leave, but I was still going to come back and do the podcast. Yeah. But um, I was ready to go, like to the point <laughs> that I didn't even like renew my lease or anything. Wow. But then I like all of a sudden I got this check in my heart and my spirit, and I was just like. I'm not supposed to move, yeah. mm. even though the opportunity was huge and great. It was glamorous. It was what I wanted to be a smack in the face to my ex to be like, Haha, I'm doing better without you. Mm. But I had to stay mm. and yeah. easier to and take that step, that step away. It was right? easier to yeah. do that because then because I was worried that I was going to bump into people that may have been affiliated mm. with what had happened sure. or people that knew things about it. Or, like, I just wanted to I didn't want to answer questions. I wanted to go. And so that bravery to stay was is something really powerful. And then fast yeah. forward, not even a whole year later, it was like that was totally a God move because mm-hmm. I would have been in a very, very bad situation yeah. had I had gone ahead and gone. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's right. It takes a lot of bravery just to sometimes stick it out. But it's interesting to hear you say not even a year later because you go like, a year's a long time mm-hmm. Yes, before you have confirmation mm-hmm. that it you've is. done the right thing. I mean, that, uh, and sometimes Voskamp, it's many years before yes, you yes. exactly. And v- Voskamp, who I'm sure y'all know and love as well, she always says, I want deep roots and and lots of fruit and none of that happens fast. None of it. It takes forever. And so being brave a lot of times <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. requires you to go, I'm going to jump and I do not know how long I fall. Mm-hmm. Scary. But I know God's invited me to jump. And so I jump, but I don't know how long until I yeah. get safely landed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a safe landing. Right. Right. You know, yeah. like it yes. might hurt a long way. So Ginger, yeah. it makes me think, can I ask a question back to you? Of course. Yeah. I have a, as a woman who's been married 37 years, mm-hmm. as we get into our 40s, 50s, uh, and are in long-term relationships with our job or our spouse or or our church, are there still opportunities to be brave or does it does it get easier? 
You know, I, I think there are aspects of it that get easier. Mm-hmm. There are things that you become, of course, familiar with and comfortable with. But what takes bravery in all of that is keeping it fresh and not getting uh, so familiar yeah. that you take it for granted and then it becomes a disaster. Yeah. Interesting. So I think it takes a lot of a lot of courage to step out and find the new things, find the excitement and, you know, let your eye puff up and say happy anniversary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, here we go. <laughs> Whatever it takes. But so, yeah, in some ways it gets easier. Some ways it gets harder because yeah. you have you go through hard things in life mm-hmm. and you have to find the way to do that together. And sometimes it works really well. Other times it doesn't, you know, yeah. it, it can be really challenging. My my brave thing, the the area for me that's been more difficult more recently, and I'm so much better about this than I used to be. I'm glad that, you know, we're all making progress. But for me, it is to stay in faith when I've seen the opposite happen. When Mm. I prayed for something, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, when things went badly, to stay in faith. Mm -hmm. And, And that is a choice. And that really... For me, it takes courage to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you Absolutely. when I'm saying it because I mean it, but I don't feel it yet. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest ways to be brave. It, what, becoming a Christian, a Christ follower, is a brave move because you are trusting your whole life into something that you mm-hmm. can't see it. I yeah. can feel it. Can't control Some, it. Right. I, this is all, I'm giving it all to you, right. yeah. and I don't know what that means. So that's the most brave you can be. Yeah. I had this experience with God. Ginger, you can correct me if this is bad theology, but I had to, all of you can. All of you can. But I had this experience with God where that kind of happened, where I thought we were going down the path of praying for a thing and that mm-hmm. this thing was going to work. And, and then it all fell apart. Oh, and I, so said to, I said to the Lord, if a human would have done this to me, it would take some time for me to earn back trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be a little slow coming back. Yeah. Not coming back to God at all, but just coming back in that faith. I'm going to pray and believe. And so... And I think that's okay. Yeah, it just took a little courage for me to be like, hey... I feel like you broke trust with me, mm-hmm. God, yeah. even though I understand that's not his character, but that's how I feel today. Mm-hmm. And so we're just going to have to rebuild trust for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's totally where I've been with God and yeah. for, a, for a long time. Cause I literally, I, and I know you just recently with the passing of your loved one, yeah. like when my marriage did not like work out, <laughs> yes. you know, and I was really believing and fasting and praying mm. and declaring and you were in ministry. I was, yeah, were, we were both were, in ministry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. Course the Lord was gonna. This is gonna be a great testimony. And, and yeah. also, like, because so many people, and this is why I, I'm like, you know, I feel some type of way about people that have all these prophetic words, but so many people have mm-hmm. spoken so many things over our lives oh, wow. as careful. a couple. Be careful. Yeah, with just that. be very careful with that because I was standing on that. Yep. Like, yes. I was standing on like the future of what was gonna happen even when my daughter graduated, the ministry that he and I were gonna do together. And wow. so I was standing on that, believing on that, and saying like, God, I know you're gonna bring this through. He has to. Like, this is yeah. my yeah. face. And then when it just is like, uh, uh-uh. it was like divorce mm-hmm. papers were delivered to me, mm-hmm. and then after that. Then we had the actual divorce, you know, affir- affir- confirmed. Yeah. And then he got married. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, we done done. You yes. know, so me me and God have had to go through this season of like, I, I mean, I'm not, I love you and everything, but yes. we beefing a little bit. I'm because not going anywhere else. I'm not, I, but, but, but I'm not right. going anywhere else, but I, we gonna have to work on it. Yes. It's a relationship. Yes. yes. Because I feel like you failed me, you know, like, and yes. that's why even I know he hasn't, but that's one reason why I couldn't be a worship pastor at the time mm. yeah. because it took courage for me to stop doing what I was naturally did, doing, yeah. like to step down and say, I can't sing like our God has never failed when I kind of felt like he did, even yes. though I knew he hadn't, I yes. knew, he, I knew my ex did, but I was conflicted with how but I was what's feeling. What's so beautiful through that whole thing is I remember you talking about it and us all agreeing that this is going to be a big testimony, you know, when your marriage is put back together. Yeah. And yet now with with hindsight of what happened, it's still a huge testimony yeah. for what God is doing in you. It is. And that is what is so beautiful is, is there's always a testimony in what we go through. Yes. Yeah. There's always something that God wants to bring out of it. But for me, and, and the same thing, things that we're all talking about, I go through a lot of times where I'm like, you know, God, if I was going to do it, I would do it this way instead. Oh, that's, <laughs> that could be half my journal. Yeah. <laughs> it is right. half mine. Right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Lord, I've got your plan here. If yeah. you just follow yeah. step A, B, and yeah. C, we're, we'll be good. Yeah. Just follow yes. this. Well, mm-hmm. let's jump in. We're, we're going to let Joyce talk to us a little bit. Need okay, it. we need yeah. it. We can use this. So listen to what Joyce has to say about taking that step 
of faith and how that takes real courage. So the Lord said, I will destroy, blot out, and wipe away mankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, not only man, but the beasts and the creeping things and the birds of the air, for it grieves me and makes me regretful that I have made them. But Noah found grace and favor in the eyes of the Lord. Can I tell you something? No matter how bad things look, God's always got a man, he's always got a woman, and it only takes one. And it could be you. It only takes one. What one person can do, one man, Adam, sinned, and sin was passed on to all men. One God-man, Jesus Christ, became righteous, and righteousness was passed on to all men. Amen. Let me tell you, if you'll stand up and pay the price and not care who likes it, God can use you to do something beyond the ordinary. I don't want to be ordinary. I don't care anything about being average. I want to be all I can be in Jesus' name and make a difference. You've all got greatness on the inside of you. If you're a believer, you have a desire down deep inside of you to do something extraordinary. Don't you? It's in, it's in there. It's like, and then the devil will come against your brain. Well, who do you think you are? You can't do that. <laughs> it only takes one. And God uses, <clears throat> God uses some of the most ridiculous people. I mean, 1 Corinthians says that he uses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What the world would throw away, God chooses and uses for his glory. So let me just say this. Do not discount or disqualify yourself. Do not insult God by saying that he cannot use you. <laughs> God chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world so that no man can take the credit. I just love for people to look and say, well, that's got to be God. <laughs> right. Isn't that the best? Yes. I think it's one of my most favorite things. If I could pick something to tell somebody, maybe who doesn't know Jesus, I'd be like, do you know what you can do if you know him? Mm. Because I... Nothing makes me more sad than someone to say, I can't, I'm not qualified. I can't do that. I don't know how. Yeah, you can. You sure yeah, can. Yeah. But if you don't know who you are in Christ and you don't realize that you have authority in him, it's not you doing it. It's him. You can do anything. Yeah. I'm passionate about that one. I can I just I think it's so good. Nice. Look at like that. I feel it. You feel so brave. But right? isn't, so isn't brave. this that area that most people... Um, will be the first to flinch in fear. Oh, yeah. You know, I've had this dream, this desire, nothing's happening. Yeah. What if I step out and it doesn't work? What if I'm missing God and it's not Him and it's just me? There are all the what ifs yeah. that suck our courage yes. away. Mm -hmm. And then what if? Like, what if and you what did if? fail? You just got to work yeah. it all the way to the yeah. end. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, what if? You'll go find another job. Absolutely. Yeah. What if? You'll get in another relationship. What yeah. if yeah. this fails? Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah. survive. You will actually survive. It'll be okay. Every one of us sitting here and everyone listening and watching with us, like, the thing you didn't think you survived, you survived. Right. You'll do it again. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah. do it again. And so just be brave enough to try and see what happens. Why did you write on this? Uh, because I wasn't naturally brave at all. Mm. It, it is not easy for me. I'm naturally in my own like anniness, especially in my early 20s. If it's hard, I want to walk away. If if it requires a lot of me, it's probably not from God. You know, yeah. like yeah. and um and then I moved to Nashville. And when I moved to Nashville, it just kind of changed my view of my life and of the world. And so I, the first one I wrote was Let's All Be Brave. And it was my story of moving and leaving a job teaching school to pursue this full time and moving to Nashville. And after I finished that book and people started reading it, they were like, but tell us what to do. And I was like, oh, my bad. Mm 
I left that out. <laughs> so I was like, that's going to take 100 days. That's right. going to take 100 days. Right. So that's why I wrote 100 Days to Brave is I thought, oh, after you read, some, this, well, this happens to us all the time where yeah. you go, hey, me too. We had a conversation backstage. Where I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, how did you do that? Right, or right. even when Amanda was doing my lipstick, I was like, what color is this? Yeah. Right? When someone else hears your story, they want to be brave or they yeah. want to jump in. Yeah. And so that's why that's where 100 Days to Brave came from was, okay, now if someone else's story has inspired you to be braver, yeah. here's 100 Days worth worth of trying to find it for you too. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. I love it that it, it really just speaks to the fact that everyone has bravery inside. That's of it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, so many people think they need to have a new life. Yeah. Like, well, th- okay, if I'm going to be brave, then I'm going to move to this foreign country. I'm going to move. Mm-hmm. I'm going to change everything. And maybe that is right for some people, but the majority of people, there is this opportunity to be brave in the life you already have. Mm-hmm. And that will actually, I talk about confetti poppers a lot because I love them, but it like <laughs> kind of confettis your people. Mm-hmm. Like if you're brave That's in the good. life you have, that gets on other people Mm -hmm. and somewhere down the chain Mm -hmm. is the person who's going to move to a foreign country for an important reason but that may that's not going to be me Mm -hmm. but I'm going to be brave in the story that God's given me Mm -hmm. and then hope that that confettis other people yeah Yeah. what is your definition then that that we're working with here of brave because you know that we're all so different yeah and that the courage that we need the the issues that are harder for us are Mm -hmm. varied Mm -hmm. widely so we all need different types of courage what is the definition of bravery oh do y'all have one in your head well, you wrote the book on it. So. I did. I mean, I do <laughs> like what you like to take on. Um, excuse me. That's why we invited right. you. Yeah. <laughs> you no, you can one. ask anybody I'll you want. I'll take this one. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, for me, that, when Webster Dictionary defines courage and defines being brave, it says doing a thing that seems really hard or impossible without fear. But what we all know is I don't know anybody who's done anything without fear. Exactly. Yeah. I, it just isn't reality. Mm-hmm. And so my... Any international definition <laughs> is is doing the thing even when you hear the whispers of fear, you just don't listen to them anymore. Yeah. Right? So we're all going to hear that you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. All of us at some point today could have heard you're not good enough to do this thing. Yeah. And and we have just had enough practice that we go, yeah, okay, pff, I don't listen mm-hmm. to that anymore. And it gets quieter sometimes. It get louder. Gets louder other times. I was telling y'all that we had a photo shoot a couple of weeks or last week at work, and and. Those aren't easy days for me all the time. There's just mm-hmm. a lot of fears and lies that whisper sure. in my head, and sometimes they are yelling. And and it is different 10 years in than it was when I started. Mm-hmm. They're, they get a little bit quieter. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think it is doing the thing, not expecting there to be, okay, I'm not scared at all. Now I'm brave. It's like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> the whispers are still there. Sure. You're just not mm-hmm. listening to them anymore. I love what you said, too, how it is, it is so different for every person. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mike and I were talking about last night. I said, what do you think brave is? And he <laughs> automatically jumps to, like a soldier who goes to yes. war is brave. I said, uh, yeah, Agreed. that is that's brave. brave. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's big brave. I said, you know what's brave for me? When a kid throws up on me and I still clean it up. Like, yes. that is brave to me because I think it's yes. disgusting. Without gagging and throwing up yeah, yourself, like, especially. Yeah, like I them and still I, parenting. I, yeah, yeah. loving <laughs> Love yeah. them. Yeah. Parenting is the bravest thing we yes. can do. It is. No it is. Thing. But I think what just through this conversation, like what causes me to rise up to fight against that fear is so different from somebody else. But those feelings of wanting to pull back and pushing yeah. through mm-hmm. that is what the where the bravery comes yeah. in. Despite what it is you're being brave for. Can you know, I, I use oh go. No, go ahead. Mm-mm. Okay, can I just say a really quick yes, story? Please. I wish I could tell you this happened at like Whole Foods, but it happened at Dairy Queen. So I was at a Dairy Queen. <laughs> story happened. Uh, right. Yeah. Not even Trader Joe's. No, 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 no. <laughs> a girl walks in behind me and she's crying. Uh-huh. And I have that 10 second moment uh-huh. that I know I'm like, oh, don't, Annie, don't talk to her. Let right. her just cry just at the Dairy cry. Queen. Yeah. Let the woman cry at the Dairy Queen. And I, I get my blizzard. I'm going to walk away. And I, I just know. Yeah. I just know. I'm like, yeah. on the off chance. This is this is a sentence I say to myself a lot when it's time to be brave. On the off chance it matters, there's more to lose if you don't talk to her than the embarrassment mm. if you do. That's yeah. great. And so I went back to get a napkin. Okay, I'm right. a napkin. <laughs> and I <laughs> slid right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, you got to have a napkin. And I just said, hey, I just want to make sure she, you're okay. And she, like you, had, had a drippy eye. And so she, <laughs> she just said, oh, it, I'm fine. I, it's just allergies in like January. And I was like, okay, well, I just don't think it's a total accident we're here at the same time if there's anything I can do. And she said, nope. I said, okay. So I went and got my car. And I was embarrassed a little bit and was like, 
you should have just gotten in your car. But here's the fruit and roots thing, right? I might not know until eternity. I might not know for another two years if that mattered to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the the bravery was me getting on Mm -hmm. Tower of Terror. Uh-huh. Right. And having that moment of going, I don't love this ride, but I'm going to ride it because it anyway. next yeah. time yep. it could save a life. That's right. Next time it could bring someone to Jesus. This time she just said she had a leaky eye. She did not. She was crying. Yeah, no. But, you know, I, I, and so I think those moments that yeah. you're talking about, that 10 that. second thing is, could be the tower of terror or it could be what changes someone's life. Yeah. And you're building that muscle memory of what it's like to listen to the Holy Spirit yes. by you doing totally. that. So maybe nothing happened then that we know of, yeah. but now you know, okay, I did it and nothing happened. Right. Nothing terrible right. happened. Nothing terrible. Yeah. yeah. I lived so to tell the tale. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I used to think that, that, Fear was not a big thing for me, honestly. Like, I'm kind of naturally a go-do-it person, dragging yeah. my friends on the Tower of Terror yes. or, you know... Ziplining in Zip Africa. Lining. Paragliding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skydiving. Yeah. I, I love that Lord. stuff. <laughs> love it. But what, what I've learned through all that and, and through just life and getting beat up a little bit and having things not go well mm-hmm. and other things go well, I've learned the things that we think are scary mm-hmm. are not always as important as as they turn out to be, because mm. some of those things that we think mm. should scare us and maybe don't, but it's the other things, the little things that are so important and that really matter. Yes. And that's where my fear can come in. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, let me jump out of an airplane before I have to go. Before I talk to the woman at Dairy Queen. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, I right. won't be going to Dairy Queen right. unless, you know, God tells me to now that I know this is a possibility. <laughs> The people show up there in tears. It happens. People cry at Dairy Queen. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> but it is Man, so much so more good. about people and relationships yes. than it is about the big scary things. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I love the way God teaches me those those lessons because taking those little steps. Little by little, we he doesn't ever. Well, I shouldn't say ever because God can do anything He wants. He doesn't normally shove us off a cliff. Yes. You know, He lures us. He's so generous to us and so mm-hmm. so kind and merciful that He's like, "Come on, mm-hmm. come on, you can do this." Yeah. Exactly, yeah. one step at a time. Yeah. And that's when I really find out my my fear is very real. It's just different types of fears. Yes. And following God when He's when he's gently nudging us into who he wants us to become, those fears do start to subside or the trust builds, I guess. So you have more mm-hmm. of a foundation that you're walking on and gets a little softer along the way. Yeah. yeah. When you fall, you don't fall quite so hard, but you yes. still fall. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'm so grateful for what God has done in those mm-hmm. circumstances, but we all need courage. We all need bravery. Yeah. 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 There are so many times where God, I mean, even the woman and the Dairy Queen, or if you're driving down the road and you normally turn right to go home, but the push in you is to yeah. turn left. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I say the Holy Spirit, I I mean, if you care, I'll care. (laughs) If you want me to turn left, I'll turn left. I don't, I'm going to get home either way, right? But it is all of those, if you care, I'll care. I mean, I say it, Jay, I say it all the time. If you care, I'll care. I mean, I have to say that about people. I have to say that about how I get home. I have to say that about the work we do or the deadlines we have to hit. Okay, God, if you care care. about this person, I care care. about this person. I I don't, naturally, not interested. But with you, if you care, I'll care. A few years ago, I was traveling with um, our t- a job that I had here. So I got to meet with our amazing partners. And so yeah. one of these couples that I got to go visit said, can you speak at our church? And I was like, yes, you're precious. I will. I don't speak, <laughs> <laughs> but you are sweet and I will say some words. And it was awful. Like I read from my paper and the, the guy was like, you're kind of nervous, weren't you? And I said, yeah, I was kind of yeah. nervous. <laughs> but I did it and I was, whatever. So then a couple months ago, the old church I used to go to, they were like, hey, when you come in town, can you speak? And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't do that. I don't, no, I cannot yeah. do that. And I felt so clearly God say, just do it. This is not wow. about, this is not about anybody else except you just doing what I need you to do. Yes. So I was so nervous. And there's not like there was thousands of people, but it was an act of obedience for mm-hmm. me to do yeah. this. Mm-hmm. And so I prayed before. I said, God, last time this didn't go well. So can you please mm-hmm. kick in because I'm terrified. Yeah. And I cannot explain to you like the, an- the anointing that kicked in. I was hearing myself say stuff. I was like, wow, Erin. <laughs> can I take notes on yeah. myself? She has to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Erin. 
<laughs> I saw some girl right here. Right. <laughs> this girl sitting right here, she was writing stuff down. I said, did you write down what I just said? <laughs> she was like, yeah. And, and so all that to say, the God showed me something in that. That was very brave of me. I yes. recognize that. It wasn't about what I said, but it was an act of obedience. And I feel like God showed me in that, see, I got you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. When you do what I'm calling you to do, I will show up. Just do do it. And it was I, double brave yes. because you failed. And yeah. I'm sure you didn't. Oh, I'm sure, she didn't. I'm sure you did sure not. Did. But yeah. in yeah. your mind, <laughs> you failed the first I time. Did. So to step out and do it again, yeah. that that was brave. Was actually, good job. They both model something really important to us, that you were actually brave both times. And yeah. the, the yeah. result of courage is not always success. Exactly. Yeah. The oh, result yeah. of courage is courage. Yeah. And so That's you good. did it because you were brave enough to even do it the first time. Mm-hmm. You at least had muscle memory of what it feels like to stand on a stage. Yes. And yeah. so I wonder when we get to heaven, uh-huh. if we look at your tally sheet, if the Lord will mark both of those as wins. Right? Because the first yeah. one had to happen for the yep. second one to happen. But yeah. that's not why you're doing it. And yeah. that's not what we're promised. Exactly. What we're promised mm, is his good. presence. Mm-hmm. And that's what you got. Right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I just think I need to hear for myself that that bravery begets bravery, not bravery begets success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Joyce points out some very important concepts here. So we're, we're going to check back in w- with her because she says, when we step out in faith, we'll have to let go of the one thing, think the trapeze, before mm. you grab on to the other thing. Yes. So let's check that out and we'll come back and talk about it. All right. Genesis 12, one through three. Now in Haran... The Lord said to Abram, go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you with an abundant increase of favor and I will make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. And I will even bless those who bless you who confer prosperity or happiness upon you, and I will curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you, and in you will all the families and the kindred of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. Now, what a promise. Wow, <laughs> gonna make your name famous, I'm gonna make you wealthy, you're gonna have everything you need, you, you know, man, you're gonna be so so anointed and put together that even if anybody blesses you, they're going to be blessed for blessing you. And it's like, whoa, but you don't get all that unless you do verse one. Leave everything that you know and you're familiar with and go to a place that I will show you once you have already walked off from everything else. I see you're like, Okay, here's the thing, really. Anytime that God is calling you to something else, you're going to have to let go of something (laughs) to take hold of the next thing. And very often, you're not going to have all the details of this thing (laughs) You just know this one's done. And maybe you've held on to it a long time to make sure it's done. You kind of thought it was dying, but now you know it is dead with a capital D. Amen? It's like, can't do that anymore. Or if you keep doing it anymore, it's going to have no life in it at all for you. No anointing in it at all for you anymore. Now, we all have that happen to us, but... Maybe you don't recognize it. Maybe you even miss it. And you keep holding on to things that aren't fulfilling to you because you don't know what the next thing is. And a lot of people just have all this stress and all this pressure in their lives. And God kind of gave me an example of what happens. It's like, if, if I'm over here holding on to this and I'm like, You know, God will keep what the next thing is for you about that far from you. Come on. (laughs) You know, God is into mystery. (laughs) Big time. 
And so it's like, eventually the only way you're gonna take hold of this is to let go. And that's where the faith comes in. You guys ever just feel like you're reaching out and you're so holding tight back here that you can't quite reach it and it's yeah. right there. Nice. Let's talk about some of those things that we do have to choose to be brave in. The things that are hard, um, risking rejection, mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. We have to be brave to forgive. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Um, trying again when something yeah. hasn't gone the way you wanted it to. Facing our faults, ooh, that's an icky yeah. one. That one's, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that one's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, faith in general, like you're talking about, mm -hmm. all those things are brave. And and you've talked about some everyday things that we can do mm -hmm. um, to build some habits yeah. that grow courage in our life. What are some of those types of things? Yeah, I mean, I think truth goes a long way, right? T being brave enough to tell yourself the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's a daily practice of here's what's true today. Mm -hmm. This is. This is what's hard today. This is what's going to be easy today. Here's who I'll see. Yeah. I think it's just telling yourself the truth. Even as I'm listening to Jay, I'm thinking, man, there are so many people that the bravest thing is to pay attention at work that those numbers don't keep matching up. Uh -huh. There may be somebody doing something and you don't want to tell because you don't want to mess up the yeah. whole system, And but something's not matching in your job, Yeah. right? Or mm. you're seeing something going on with a friend and you're like, I think my friend might actually have a problem with alcohol, yes. but you don't want to say anything because you don't want to mess up and you don't want to hurt your friend's feelings. Yeah. Are you brave? Brave enough to say the red flags are very red yeah. here. Yeah. You don't want to lose yeah. a relationship. Right, yeah. right. So, so I think that is a practice, is paying attention and telling yourself the truth. The other practice for me is having conversations like this about mm -hmm. courage. Yeah. Because when you will sit with other people mm -hmm. and kind of go like, hey, I've got this idea. Should yeah. I even try this? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have your one or two people that you say, this is going to sound crazy, yeah. but I'm going to tell you the thing I'm thinking I might want to try next, or the, yeah. I'm going to tell you about this date I went on, or I'm going to tell you that we're, we're trying to get pregnant again. We just think we may want to do one. And people are like, what? And you're like, yeah, but I've got my safe people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. right. So I think you those guys are, are so some of the practices. Thank you. Yeah, being that for each other matters a ton. Yeah. You need people that you can fail loudly in front of. Mm -hmm. The whole world mm -hmm. is going to see us fail quietly, right? But when when it is a, hey, we've been on two dates and I really like him, the world doesn't have to know that, but your up close people are going to yeah. know if yeah. that fails loudly in mm -hmm. your life. Yeah. And so have some people that you can fail loudly with. Yeah. So And they who go, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. I bet that didn't work. Mm -hmm. We're going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, th I think it's a practice, Ginger. I think it is... Courage isn't a thing that you get and then you got it. It's not a badge right. on the Peloton or a, or a Girl <laughs> Scout badge, right? Like, it's not like once you've got it, you got it. It's like, Ding. no, this is a practice. Yeah. <laughs> Glad that one's over. over. Yeah, good. <laughs> Finally. I'm great. Um, it just doesn't seem like that's what happens. It feels like it's a practice that we continue on, like our practices of scripture reading and going to church and being in healthy yeah. relationship and reading, reading other things that help us and mm -hmm. reading Ginger's books and, you know, prayer and fasting and Sabbath and all the other practices yeah. that are a long-term investment in who we want to be. Courage should be the same. Yeah. yeah that's good. There, there are so many of those things that, that we learn and experience with God. Yeah. Like so much courage that you're building right now. So mm -hmm. much courage that that you were building, Aaron, when you got up in front of that crowd again. Yes. And that's how God builds that stuff in our life. But, you know, I wish it was different. I wish it would be just, you know, pop the right multivitamin yes. and I would get it. <laughs> right. It would be so, so much easier right. that way. But or after five times of being brave, the sixth one's free. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> that would be really easy. nice. It just does not work that way. So when we come back, we're going we're gonna to go to Joyce one more time, but I want to talk about some of those scriptures that we mm -hmm. hold on to. What mm. are some of those things that really give us a foundation of courage? But right now, Joyce is going to talk about the fact that it is so much more than just the word brave. It really is a bravery that comes from from the right foundation, from a trust in God alone. I'd say I'm encouraged every time that I go back and read about Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right. Daniel said, I will not defile myself. And there was a couple of different things that happened. I'm just going to tell you about them to conserve some time. But one of the things that happened was Daniel was, they passed a law that anybody who prayed to anybody other than the king <laughs> would be put in a lion's den. 
And I love what the Bible says. It says, and Daniel, with his windows open, continued to pray three times a day, just as he always had done. Now, you see why that's so important? He said, I'm not going to compromise one little bit. I'm not going to worry about what you think you can do to me. I'm going to continue to be who I am, fully myself. I'm a Christian. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm not ashamed of it. And you'll just have to do whatever it is that you do, and I'll trust God. Well, sure enough, he was put in the lion's den. Laid down, had a nap. <laughs> God sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. Amen. And the king actually didn't want to see Daniel hurt because he actually really loved and respected him but because he'd given his word that he would do this, he had to do it. And if you read the whole story, it says that when Daniel came out, the king rejoiced and he made a rule that nobody could serve any God but Daniel's God. So what, what, what's the message there? The message is that if we will stand up and be who we're supposed to be, people are going to believe in Christ because of our witness. Are you there? Oh, yeah. They may make fun of you. They may talk about you. They may reject you. But when push comes to shove, honey, they're going to know who they can go to to get answers for their life. And we are coming into a time in our society where people are going to be desperate for answers. And you want to make sure that you have paid the price to be somebody that they feel like they can come to in a time of need. Lion's Den does mm -hmm. not sound like a comfortable place. I mean, no. how many times have we felt like, though, you know, not in reality, of course, but um, that we've been thrown into a place that we felt that uncomfortable, that we right, were that right. afraid of the situation around us, just didn't know what God was going to do. And for for me, one of the things I'll find myself out loud just saying over and over, I trust you, God. I trust you, yeah. God. Because you don't know what else to do. Yeah. And so, you know, what are you going to trust in? You, you can choose to trust that that lion looks really hungry and he's going to take a big bite out of me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you can shift your focus. And I think that's something really important because when we have fear, yeah. when we need to be brave, we need tools to know how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was reading Hebrews recently. I think I was in Hebrews 11. I feel pretty mostly confident that's what was happening. <laughs> but it's Hebrews. And so it's, it's this passage of, passage of Scripture that's all about all these heroes of faith. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's... Just so that's the right one, them. too. You're was good. that right? Hebrews yeah. 11? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I thought, wow, there's so many of them. I'll never be like that. And then all of a sudden, something stood out to me so strongly that they didn't just become that. Like yes. they were this, and then all of a sudden, they are a hero of the faith. Yes. God called them to do a thing. So they took a step. And I, I can take a step. I don't mm -hmm. have to be, the, be, be brave for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't have to decide today that I'm going to do all of this. Today, I have to decide to do the one thing that God called me yeah, to do today. Yes. And that made it feel more like doable, more possible. Yes. I can do one thing. When you think about Isaiah writing that by his stripes, we are healed. Mm. I mean, our pastor mm -hmm. just taught on it that, that truthfully, he was writing about nail scarred hands and, and the whole describing the crucifixion before crucifixion yeah. was a punishment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Right. So, wow. so the courage of Isaiah to go. So I'm crucifixion write... wasn't even a thing then. No. Wow. No. That's, That's astounding. Scary. It's unbelievable. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. And so then you go, man, he had the courage to write down exactly what he heard God saying, mm -hmm. put it out into the world in a way that is still recorded for us mm -hmm. thousands yeah. of years later and never live to see mm -hmm. that wow. Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so you just go, man, the courage of that one step, none mm -hmm. of those people lived hoping they'd get in Hebrews 11. Yeah, that's right. I would make that list. Oh, oh, that's oh, right. Like, I can't, I hope I make it into the Hall of Fame of Hebrews 11. <laughs> but they did their one thing. And yeah. Isaiah wrote what he heard. God say, and then trusted that God would make right 
right. what, all that was there, yeah. right? And so you just go, man, that is, that's courage to yeah. me. Yeah. But isn't that like every story in the Bible? Uh-huh. Like even you think of the Old Testament, them thinking of, or like being able to prophesy that the Messiah was coming yes. and look crazy, yes. you know? <laughs> you know, yeah, like it's sure. to, to be that descriptive of who he was and just mm-hmm. really stand on faith. And you just think about all of the... All the yes. risks that they took. Yes. We talked about Noah. We talked yeah. about, you know, all, it takes bravery to stand on faith and not know what the outcome is. And that's what we're all living right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. But because we have the Bible and we've read the outcome, yeah. we're, we're, we kind of put in our minds like, oh, they knew. Yes. Like Mary knew for sure. You yes. know, so my yeah. mentor sends a verse every morning. Just like text that's one great. little verse. Oh, that's so nice. And, it, and sometimes well, she she'll, do it us too. Uh, well, listen, here's the funny okay. part. Uh, <laughs> my friend Angie and I were on a flight and Angie meets with her as well. And we were on a flight to who knows where, here, I don't know. And um, we get off the flight and we've been talking about Nancy and how good Nancy is. And she always prays. And I was like, actually, while we were on the flight, she sent me a scripture. She was like, wait a minute, me too. Same one, same one. <laughs> uh-huh. She so Which I think is amazing because what she does is every woman she invests in, mm. she starts our day mm. by going here's what's true, Mm. right? So like, and and it's never like trying to hit our prophetic button. It is, hey, we're working through 1 Peter 1. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send you a verse from 1 Peter 1 every day. That's great. And it is so, it is that like, it gives me something to tie my balloon to every morning Yeah, and go like, I can be brave today because I, I, whether I made time this morning or not, Nancy made time to tell me that scripture is true. And I, I really love what you're encouraging people to do is to be brave enough to speak the truth and also yeah. to stand on truth yes. because that that is where we're in such a firmer place yes. to be able to say that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, of power and love and a sound mind. Sound I'm not mind. going crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I've, right. I've got love when I don't think I do. And just to stand on the truth of who yes. God says we are mm-hmm. makes so much of that fear just melt away. Yeah, yes. And when I had my doubt, you know, once I talked, you know, I talked about the, the, the failure, you know, of everything. The scripture that really stood out is like, I can do all things through mm-hmm. Christ that strengthens me. So when you think of that scripture, you, you of course think of the, I can do all things, right? Yeah. But the part that was really difficult was through Christ mm-hmm. that strengthens me. Like you have to have that through Christ is what you were talking about earlier. Like when I, my faith was shaky. Yeah. Because as a Christian, yes, I can honestly, it takes bravery to admit that, that Mm -hmm. my faith was weak because I really did feel like, where were you, God? Like, why, why, why did you fail me? Um, But when that happened, I know that I can't do all things if it's not through Christ. Mm -hmm. I can't be brave to do the things that I know I'm supposed to do in this world if it's not through Christ. And so that's what anchored me in my faith to be brave. I'm like, I got to have Christ in my life in order for me to do those all things that I know he's put inside of me. And I think it matters when you're, when we take that verse, I say a lot to the Lord, uh, you said, you said, (laughs) you said, I can do all things. Yes. Because he said through Christ who strengthens you, not not in this scenario, comforts you or holds you or positions you, but strengthens you. Yeah. So you go, okay, God, I can do this today through Christ who will give me actual strength. strength. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to walk like I'm stronger than I feel uh-huh. because Christ is strengthening me yes. to do this. Yes. And so man, I cut those scriptures up and uh-huh. I say you guys this, part, like this part this part this part because I'm weak right now. I need None the strength. of those yeah. words are accidental. Yeah. None of them. Yeah. And so when you see when you see strength and you go, "Oh, when I need to be stronger, I come back here." Yeah. yeah. Because it's through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. 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 Anything that you want to close with, just to encourage anyone who's got a particular issue right now that they need some courage in, Yes, what would you say? I would say you probably are braver than you know. Mm-hmm. You're braver than you know. If, if you sat down, our friend listening and watching who feels that, if you sat down across the table from any of us and told us your story, we could point where you're brave. Yeah. We could go, actually, you know, everybody doesn't do that. <laughs> everybody doesn't yeah. do that. Yeah. You actually did a really brave thing, so you're braver than you know. Mm-hmm. And if you will let somebody in, they'll remind you. Oh, if good. we're not enough today, but we're trying to be to remind you you're brave enough, if you'll let somebody in, they'll remind you you're brave. Mm. And th- then just to think about what God can do with that little tiny step yes. that you yeah. give Him. Yeah. 
it can be astounding. Yes. Mm -hmm. You never know what God has in mind. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it takes that first little, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give you this tiny part because I'm afraid to give you all the rest. That's right. Mm -hmm. So start with what you can. Annie, yes. thank you so thank much. You. It's been oh, so good. great to have you here. I just sad y'all do this without me. I just, <laughs> I'm I'm always wrong. here with y'all when I'm here with y'all. But then I go and y'all keep doing it. I love getting to be here. Thank no, you guys for having me. For it's so thank fun. You. <laughs> we are so appreciative. And I, I know that all of you out there are so glad that you've also had this opportunity. You can grab Annie's book, 100 Days to Brave, and just give yourself 100 days to concentrate Concentrate yes. on this. See what God will do in your life. Yes. And I have a feeling He will just blow your mind. We also have a free resource that we want to let you know about. This is a free online study, which is a great way to dig into the Bible, to get that truth that we were talking about that you need so desperately in your life right now. So go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, and you'll find the study called Make Every Day Count. You got to be brave to make every single day day count. But I'll tell you, God has something wonderful for you in this day and the next one and in every single day. So we encourage you while you're there, check out all the other podcasts, catch up. Um, We hope that you'll subscribe and tell your friends about us. And we are so glad that you are here. You are strong, you are brave, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.